Hello FX fans and welcome back to another episode of Flight Deck. In this month's episode we take a look at the F4F Wildcat, a closer look at the Vulcan as this month marked the 29th anniversary of its last flight in RAF service, our latest release the Blenheim Mark 4F. This month also marked the 86th anniversary of the Spitfire's maiden flight. With some updates on our Hawker Hunter from Manston, we take a look at the Hawker Tempest 5 and finally we take a look at some of your images. A lot to get through this month so let's get straight into it. I'm Nathan, we're Airfix and this is Flight Deck. The F-4F Wildcat was the US Navy's primary carrier-borne fighter aircraft at the start of the Second World War. Characterised by its stubby appearance, the Wildcat had been developed as part of the successful range of pre-war biplanes and had entered service with the US Navy a year prior to the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. By the time of the crucial battles for Midway and Guadalcanal, the F-4F-4 model had become the most numerous variant and new tactics enabled American naval and marine pilots to gain the upper hand on the previously all-conquering Mitsubishi Zero. The 23rd of this month marked 29 years since the last flight of the Avro Vulcan in RAF service. The final flight performed using XH-558 was at RAF Cranfield on the 20th of September 1992. The aircraft had been part of the Vulcan display team. The last RAF action was in 1993 when XH-558 flew to Bruntingthorpe after the ownership had been transferred to the Waltons. XH-558 was one of the first and also the last Vulcan B2 in RAF service making its first flight on the 1st of July 1960 and its last flight in RAF service was on the 23rd of March 1993. XH-558 went on to become a popular and frequent visitor at several air shows across the years before retiring from show service in 2015. Occupying a significant position in the history of post-war British aviation, the Avro Vulcan was without doubt one of the most distinctive aircraft ever to take to the skies with its huge delta wing profile becoming almost as iconic as the elliptical wing of the Supermarine Spitfire. When the Vulcan made its maiden flight in August 1952, the Avro team were well on their way to presenting the Royal Air Force with not only the world's first delta bomber, but also one of the world's most effective strike bombers. First introduced in 2014, the Bristol Blenheim in 70 second scale is making a return into the Airfrix range for the first time in eight years. Ordered straight from the drawing board in 1935, the Bristol Type 142, later called the Blenheim, was for its time a very advanced aircraft, but by the outbreak of the Second World War had been overtaken by fighter development. Seeing service across all major fronts of the Second World War, the Blenheim was used extensively by the RAF as both a light bomber and fighter before being phased out of service in 1943, replaced by more modern types less vulnerable to enemy fighters. You may recall late last year Hornby Hobbies acquired a Hawker Hunter. XF509 to be specific. The restoration project has begun and researcher Luke popped down to Manston to give us an update. Take it away Luke. Hi, I'm Luke, I'm the researcher for FX and we're at the old RAF Manston site uh, restoring the Hunter. So at the moment we're stripping the paint off the Hunter. Last night we applied a, a coat of aircraft paint stripper, um, nasty stuff, so wearing full PPE. Um, and we've got a group of the, the local college um, stripping off the, the loose paint ready for a second application of the stripper. We're at Manston uh, with the RF History Museum, um, some, somewhere that I have a personal connection with uh, and we have a professional working relationship as they're only about three miles down the road, maybe even less. Uh, we've sort of delegated it to the experts. Uh, I don't have experience of restoring aircraft, uh, but the, the guys at Manston do. Uh, so it's great to have that, that partnership and we've got the local college involved. So it's a real community project and uh, hopefully the, the results show that a lot of love and care has gone into it. XF509 um, served with four FTS at RF Valley, um, where it wore a, a camo scheme and then later a red scheme, which you can see um, as we're starting to strip away the paint. Um, it then went 
and, and served as a gate guardian outside the old Humbrol factory in Hull. Um, so it's got a, a connection with Airfix, uh, it's sort of come home, but in between it um, went to Fort Paul Museum uh, and once they shut down, uh, our CEO Lyndon purchased the Hunter and, and then there was a mammoth task of, of getting it here. But we're finally there and, uh, uh, and moving on, uh, making some progress, which is great. So it's quite daunting um, being involved with, with a project of this size. Um, I'm used to dealing with uh, stuff 72 times smaller than real or 48 times smaller than the real thing. Dealing with one-to-one -one is a bit different. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a real privilege to be working on it um, with something you know, that has such a connection with the brand. So the end goal is that the, uh, the Hunter will be at the museum, um, so it won't be at the Hornby site, it will be with them, it's being donated. Uh, and it's, it's going to be painted back into its original scheme, so for FTS. Over the years it's been painted a, in a number of different schemes, some not so correct, um, uh, but we're hoping to restore it to a, a, an accurate and authentic scheme, um, the camo scheme it wore at 4FTS, RF Valley. So uh, next on, on the plan is to uh, polish up the gun mounts, the, the blast deflectors that you see here. Um, we're hoping to remove them or partially remove and, and polish them up. Um, you know, when it's in the museum, it'll be one of the first things you see and, and polished up sort of chrome effect will look great. So uh, that's, that's next on the list after we've stripped the aircraft. So if you're watching this and you worked on Hunters or um, worked with the RAF or, or any aircraft restoration company and, and you have hints, tips, or you want to get involved, please let me know. Thanks Luke for the update. I'm sure we'll check in again sometime soon to see how they're getting on with the Hunter. In fact, after filming with Luke, they started work on getting those blast deflectors off. If you think you might be able to help Luke in the Hunter restoration project, send an email to marketing at airfix.com. This month marked the 86th anniversary of the Spitfire's maiden flight, March 1936 to be exact. K5054, the Spitfire prototype, took off from Eastleigh Airfield. It went through various changes and redesigns, and I'm sure at that time 86 years ago, no one could have predicted it would have become the most iconic British fighter aircraft. Of course, the model we're showing here isn't the Spitfire that first flew in 1936. This is our vintage classic Spitfire Mark 1A. The Spitfire continues to be one of our favourites here at Airfix, and this year's no different, with the release of the Spitfire Mark 9C in 24 scale, which is expected to arrive this summer. An aircraft which has to be considered one of the finest aeroplanes of the Second World War, the Hawker Tempest V could trace its design lineage back to the Hurricane Fighters, which proved so decisive during the Battle of Britain only two years earlier, but would represent the absolute zenith of piston-engined fighter design. An accomplished designer, Sidney Cam, was looking to produce his Super Hurricane replacement for the aviation saviour of the Battle of Britain. The aircraft he surely had in mind was the Tempest V. As it was, the Tempest is often confused with its predecessor in Royal Air Force service, the Typhoon, even though the two are very different aeroplanes. This month on Sprue Talk, we talk all things Airfix community. Mike is joined by flight specialist Michael Clegg and marketing assistant Brooke Hayden. Check out the link in the description below to watch the latest episode. Sprue Talk is also now available on Spotify and Google Podcasts. Finally, we take a look at some of your fantastic images from the last month.
That's all we have time for on this month's episode. What would you like to see in next month's episode? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, please like and subscribe. Nathan, over and out. Thank you.